You can count the number of delegates she won in the 2020 primaries on one hand, as long as that hand has no finger. Kamala Harris, vice president, will get all of Biden's campaign money, and on the Democrats' best issue, abortion, she's a walking reminder to women that Republicans are coming for the abortion pill. She won't just protect Plan B. She is Plan B. <laughs> Seems Bill Maher, the left's most consistent, by no stretch of the imagination, a Trump supporter, seems to predict the L that Kamala is going to take on Election Day. You know, he's still calling it down the middle and like, you got to give him credit because he can see the inevitable. There's a lot of other channels out there, I won't name any networks, that seem to think that there's still a chance, that there's still a possibility, but this is getting bad. Bill Maher, along with the pollsters, are starting to believe this race isn't as close as we once thought. She won't just protect Plan B. She is Plan B. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And as a former prosecutor, Kamala was putting criminals in jail back before liberals decided that was a bad thing. And now that CVS is locking the shaving cream behind plexiglass, Democrats are coming around to her again. Harris would be the first woman president, first black woman president, and first Asian president. But I don't vote for who will be the first. I vote for who will win. Mm. And for whatever reason, Harris has never been popular. You can count the number of delegates she won in the 2020 primaries on one hand, as long as that hand has no fingers. Yeah, that's strange. Like, they bring her up here and think she's supposed to be the popular choice when they forget to realize that she hasn't won it. one vote. She was thrust into this position. Now, we know the vice president is supposed to take on the duties of the president given incapacitation, but as far as I know, you all haven't told us that Joe Biden is completely incapacitated. So how is she getting to run as an incumbent with no challenge from the left? But I gotta say, this is her best chance of getting it done. Because if she had to go the other way, if, if she tries to run again after losing, don't think it's gonna be that popular of a campaign. In three years as vice president, she's been quieter than an electric car. And, <laughs> <laughs> and like an electric car, your MAGA uncle can't explain why she fills him with homicidal rage. <laughs> She just does. Sometimes life isn't fair. It's not fair that she's not popular. She's intelligent and accomplished. And in fact, was put in charge of the border. And look at how... Okay, bad oh, yeah. example. <laughs> <laughs> not only does Bill Maher get at the reasons why Kamala will lose this election, his guests are starting to also understand. And it's making an impact on the audience. The audience just doesn't know how to respond. You know, normally if they disapprove of something, they'll boo. You know, it's like a real comedy show in there. But they're laying down so many facts, they have to deal with it. They can't cope any longer. That's the reality that a lot of people are going to have to face coming soon. So I was mentioning in the monologue, there's some sobering statistics for the Democrats this week about the election, which is only a little over three weeks away. I'm taking this from Andrew Sullivan's column. He says, at this point in 2020, Biden, uh, with far fewer resources than Harris has, was 10 points ahead of Trump. And in 2016, Hillary was six up. And she is only 2.6 up. Pennsylvania, Biden was up seven at this point. Wow. She's up one. Michigan, Biden was up eight and she's tied. It does not seem like she is closing the deal. This week she did a media blitz yeah. Uh, of she went to Howard Stern and Stephen Colbert and The View, um, places where, you know, I would say the ass is pre-kissed. <laughs> am, am I wrong? No. Did, did that help or hurt? No, it, it, I think Kamala Harris just had the worst week of her campaign so far and has been trending downward for quite some time now. Donald mm. Trump, at this point, I think is very likely to almost certain to win the election. And I appreciate the opportunity to tell people <laughs> why I'll remember that, by the way. Kamala Harris has to explain, while she's a part of the Biden administration, second in command, you had some of the worst statistics you could possibly imagine as a politician. Worst in, hold on, I'm going to get there. Worst inflation in 40 years while Biden is president. First time you have over 100,000 opioid deaths while Biden is president. Probably the worst open border in the history of the country, eight million at least, and that's not including the half a million a year that are gotaways. 
So roughly mm. 10 million people, you could call it, in four years entering illegally, almost all of whom are going to stay. Now, she doesn't want to throw Biden under the bus for this, and she didn't want to tell everybody that he's a dementia patient, so she decided that she was going to go along. It's just the, the facts, fact. everybody. You get mad it's at me. She true. decided that she was going to go along with this until it was no longer possible because of the debate, and that's what she inherited. I haven't even gotten to her campaign yet. He said the ass is already kissed <laughs> when she goes into these interviews. It is true. It's like everywhere she's been going except for Brett Bear and 60 Minutes has been already pre-cooked kissing up to Kamala. Basically, oh, this is going to be an easy softball interview. And, you know, she's been hiding away for months now. I guess why they tried to regroup and get back. But how is she going to divorce herself from the previous four years of the administration she was a part of. She's tried to do that many times by talking about what Trump has done, but you have to actually stand on that record. It's almost like you're running as Biden. You have to basically inherit everything that he did. You're on Howard Stern and Stephen Colbert and Up in Smoke with and Call Her Daddy podcast. Like, come on, man, these guys are in the bag for you. So you really don't have a chance to really answer the tough questions. That's why it seems so shocking when you had that interview with Brett Bayer, because all of a sudden Brett Bayer is asking you real questions and you're, you can't take the heat. It seems jarring because it was an actual interview. That's what she should have been getting the whole time instead of these softballs. You remember back in the day, it was rare for somebody to go on to uh, Arsenio Hall or it was a big push to reach out to male voters and in particular black male voters that kind of blew up in their face because their real plans were unveiled. And you have, have you seen these ads they're putting out to reach out to men? It's like, it's the most like tone deaf campaign I've ever seen. I'm glad, I'm, it's, an, it's an eloquent point and I'm glad, I'm glad you got to make the eloquent point telling uh, working class voters who are men in particular, but white working class male voters in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, sorry, bro, the progress means that no one can speak for you and no one can be in favor of your interests. But aren't working that, class people also people, people who are going to be confused. color? It's, why is it just it, men? It, women are working class as well, it, it, you realize. No, of course, but we're speaking about masculinity and why, as right, as the topic at hand is why is it that the Republican Party is the party of guys who are, you know, th that, that talk about masculinity in traditional terms, that speak about courage, that speak about getting after it, that speak about taking risks. And the Democrats are, announce your pronouns, let's have boys pretend they're girls in the locker rooms, let's put tampons mm -hmm. in the, this is just reality. You know, they call them, <laughs> the, 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 what's his name? I mean, no, those things happen, they don't happen everywhere. Well, but they happen but, in enough places but, that the I, Democrat party won't condemn it, and so you ask why, why, why are they okay with all of this? why is courage only a masculine quality? These, these uh. are, it's not that it can't be a feminine quality as well, but then you get into this, what is the definition of masculinity yeah. that can be positive that doesn't upset the feminist? There's nothing, you say, oh, risk taking, uh, greater tolerance for, uh, you know, for um, dealing with like long hours at work, whatever it may be. Oh, that's terrible because you're disenfranchising women who have the same well, okay, they but do, so the do. only masculinity is toxic masculinity. This is why Tim Walls, and it's not working, and he's going around telling everybody, look at me. They do more dangerous jobs. Yeah, of course. That's just a fact. You mean triggered Tim Walls? <laughs> the one who can't get his shotgun loaded to go hunting? It's not quite right. How do you give it back? <laughs> Governor, what kind of gun is it? This is a Beretta A400. Oh, it's I brought, I bought it when I was shooting a lot of uh, trap. Even though he's supposed to be a hunting expert, that's, that literally sums up their whole outreach to men right there. Case in point, I literally said it in another video. I was like, Tim Walls is not the guy to do it. You know, I'm mean, God bless him, coach. You know what I mean? He's a coach of football team. So I guess that means he's an expert, but <laughs> it's just, it's really bad at this point. And I'm glad that a big platform like HBO Max with Bill Maher, real time. There's there's somebody that's speaking straight down the middle. So shout out to Bill Maher for actually keeping it real on this instead of being one of those ass pre-kissed destinations, you know? Let me know what you think about it in the comments. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification for all uploads. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter. The link is in the description. This is Fawcett Media.